Imagine you have terabytes of website logs tracking every single visitor interaction and from here you want to filter out some information like which pages are the most popular or where visitors drop off in your purchase funnel and so on. Traditional tools and databases are simply not designed for datasets of this scale and that's where MapReduce comes in. MapReduce is a programming model designed specifically for these cases to handle challenges of processing enormous amounts of data that just won't fit on a single computer like this. And it was introduced by Google in 2004 to tackle exactly these kinds of scenarios. Let's see how it works through our website log example. MapReduce operates in two primary phases, the map phase and the reduce phase. In case of our website log example, we start by first splitting these huge logs into smaller and manageable chunks, and these chunks then get sent to different worker computers. Each of these workers has a map function inside of it, and this map function is responsible for extracting the key information. In our case, it will map the keys, which are the specific web page visited, to their values, which if we are counting the visits, let's say, it can be the number of visits to that web page. After we are done with the map phase, now we get into the reduce phase, where all those key value pairs that are generated by the map function get sorted and grouped by their keys, meaning by their web page. And this information is being forwarded to the reduce function. In the reduce function, we add up the values to find the total visits for each unique web page. So we have the key, which is the website URL again, and the values, which we are summing up. And we end up with something like this, where let's say homepage got 200 visits, about page got 40 visits, products got 90 visits, and so on. Of course, these numbers can be much higher than just 200. And the reduce function cannot tackle more complex questions too, like average time spent on a web page or visitor demographics and so on. And now using this information, we can easily visualize it via charts and other visuals on the screen. And we get a couple of benefits of MapReduce for using it for log analysis. First, we have parallel processing power here. Distributing the work makes processing much faster than a single computer could manage. We also get scalability from this. If we get even more log data, we can just add more computers and more workers to the thread. And we also add fault tolerance, meaning if a computer goes down or fails its mid-job, MapReduce reassigns its work, ensuring everything gets done anyways. And to understand why MapReduce is so unique, let's quickly touch on batch versus stream processing. Batch processing deals with data in large chunks that have already been collected. For example, if you search for a word in Google Docs or Microsoft Word in a large file, the data is available upfront so it can process it immediately. And this is useful for large data sets where immediate results aren't essential. For example, when generating monthly sales reports or analyzing something like purchase history of customers or training machine learning models on data and so on. On the other hand, stream processing handles the data as it arrives in continuous flow. For example, when watching a YouTube video, you hit play and it starts playing immediately. For example, it can send free chunks of data per time to your computer, letting you watch the video while the other parts are loading. This is ideal for situations requiring immediate action on data streams, like identifying suspicious activity as it happens on financial transactions, or in cases where we need real-time analytics for social media feeds, and so on. But we also have micro-batch processing, which is a hybrid approach that bridges the gap between traditional batch processing and the stream processing. In the micro-batch processing, instead of processing all of this data at once, it breaks data into very small batches, and then these batches are processed at short fixed interval, let's say in every 5 minutes. This is the go-to for scenarios demanding faster results than traditional batch, but where full-on streaming isn't necessary as well. And MapReduce is a batch processing model, because it operates on data that is already there, not on a live continuous stream of incoming data. And in case of MapReduce, input data needs to be divided and distributed before map phase of MapReduce even begins. As you can imagine, batch processing is slower than streaming due to the accumulation of data before processing, but it's generally simpler to set up and manage, while stream processing can be more complex due to the consistent flow of data and the potential for errors or inconsistencies.
While MapReduce was revolutionary, it has limitations in terms of speed and flexibility for iterative and complex data processing tasks, and this is where tools like Apache Spark come in. Spark leverages in-memory processing, meaning it keeps data in RAM for very fast calculations compared to MapReduce reliance on disk storage, and it handles a wider range of tasks including SQL queries, machine learning, and real-time processing. Apache Flink is another powerful framework used for real-time data processing and it offers similar capabilities to Spark Streaming, allowing for immediate analysis of data as it arrives. This is a more specialized tool for scenarios requiring real-time data analysis and it's often used alongside with Spark for a complete big data processing toolkit. Hadoop is a broader ecosystem that provides the foundation for tools like Spark and MapReduce to run, and it includes distributed file system, HDFS, for storing large datasets across multiple machines, and also a resource management system, YARN, that allocates resources, meaning CPU, memory, to applications like Spark or MapReduce. Think of it as an underlying infrastructure that Spark and other tools use to manage their big data. And cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google offer managed data processing solutions. For example, AWS offers the EMR, which also uses Apache Spark under the hood. Azure offers HD Insight, which is a managed Hadoop, Spark, and other big data tools service. And I'm sure Google has its own managed data processing solution. So while MapReduce was a breakthrough, Spark has largely taken its place for most modern big data batch processing tasks. However, understanding MapReduce is still important because this gives you a solid foundation for understanding how these powerful tools work together. Thanks for watching. For important updates, subscribe to my newsletter and follow me for more content like this. See you next time.